life, with relationships. Sometimes you have ups, sometimes you have downs. Every relationship has ups and downs. The key is to navigate through them and not give up and not quit. You know, we've had our ups and downs. We certainly have one of the ups. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, there you go. Okay, one of the ups that we had is when we first met each other. We're in love, we're in love. You know, it's the honeymoon phase. This happens in relationships where it's just they can do no wrong. Everything about them, if they burp, if, you know, oh, isn't that cute? And he could have gone ahead, and I can remember one time I had a little Easy VW, does it. and he backs it up into a pole and crashes it. I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. I do that all the time. <laughs> you know, it's just they can do no wrong. Well, yeah, but we had a rough first year. That was the down part of it. We rushed into marriage so quickly. Six weeks, we were married. We went to Vegas, eloped. We don't recommend that anybody does Yeah, we're not this. teaching to do that. <laughs> but that first year was really tough, and it was a down year. I, I remember feeling like such a failure as a man because I couldn't get my marriage to work out. You know, I had been a part of uh, uh, a broken family, um, divorced, my parents divorced, and then after a while they got married again, then they divorced again, and it was all, you know, all screaming and yelling and conflict, and it was awful. It was a horrible existence, and then I found out that in my first year of marriage, it was happening to me, and I just had to go to the Lord and say, the buck stops here. I will not have this in my life, and sometimes you just have to admit, you have to want your marriage to work out. You have to want it. You can't just expect it to. You have to want it to work out and do whatever it takes because you do have your ups and downs. And I remember praying and just say, God, I'll do whatever you want. And the great part about it, the up part does, is that through all the pain and all the mystery of it, not knowing, what, you know, you don't know how it's going to turn around. You just don't know your tomorrow and how God's going to do it. But I got closer to Jesus the pain forced me closer to Jesus, on my knees more with him. And through it all, I got to know him better. So that, be, that became, wow, an, an incredible experience because our marriage got better and I got closer to the Lord, and I love that. And it seems like once we put him in the center of our marriage, things evened out. He was our priority. Whatever he said, that's what went. We went ahead, and it's not about my will or his will or what's right. It's about keeping peace. It's about keeping unity. It's about not allowing division to tear us apart. And when you put Christ at the center and you're willing to do whatever it takes, he is the healer, he is the restorer, he is the mender of the brokenhearted. Hey, Amen. You know, I found out something. I found out being blessed is better than being right. All the arguments that she and I could have won against each other, we chose to get in agreement because when you're in agreement, that's where the blessing flows. That's when Jesus is in the center. When you get the conflict out, when you stop trying to make your marriage work out for you and decide, I'm going to bless the Lord with my actions, the blessings start flowing in your life. So I would rather be in agreement and be blessed than to be right in a conflict. You should be able to argue with your spouse and win every time. You should be able to win every time. How do I do it? I just, I just make sure that we find this place of agreement. And then that's inviting the Holy Spirit to come in and work it out. You know, work it's, it out. it's whoever says, forgive me first, they're the most Christ-like. It's going to take two people to argue. So you can't have a fight if there's only one person arguing. They'll just be there. Ah, you, know, you know, it just doesn't work. A room fight takes two people. But you can decide, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to have the peace of God. I'm going to love. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, even if I'm right. And this is what my husband did, which to me was amazing. On our first year is I would be sometimes, you know, we'd get into it and, you know, he'd get all mad and go to the other room. And I can remember him just crying out to God, Lord, give me that unconditional love. And he'd come and even though maybe I was being a brat, maybe. he would say, yeah, <laughs> he would say, I'm sorry. And I'd say, 
Good thing you're saying I'm sorry. You know, you should. You know, I just had this attitude. And he'd get all mad again, and he'd go back and pray. And God would say, you're looking for a response. I told you to love her unconditionally. And when he did that, to me, it was the first time I ever saw Jesus Christ working through a person was it hit me so strong. And I just said, God, I want to be able to love like that. I want to be able to say, I'm sorry, even though I'm right. And so you need to, if you want a good marriage, you need to learn how to say, I'm sorry, even though you're right. Well, one of the things is you can take responsibility that you haven't stopped the argument. It takes two people to argue. And what you can do is say, look, I, I should have been more responsible. In my heart, I'm thinking, how did I let this conflict in? I need to go to the Lord and find out how I let it in. You know what he told me? He said, you keep saying you're sorry, and you keep doing stuff so she'll change, so she'll respond. That's not unconditional. You need to go out there and love her unconditionally, and she doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't have to change. Love her because I love her. When you do that, you're asking the power of the Spirit of God to come and be the changer. He will change your spouse. If you will love your spouse and stay settled with God and do it because you love the Lord and not try to get your spouse to change. Stop trying to manipulate her. Stop trying to manipulate him with the things you do so that they will change. The Spirit of God will get involved and be the changer. So where there's, <laughs> where I'm having fun, I just close this notes because I'm supposed to have the first 10 minutes, but um, go ahead. it's okay. You, you got know, it. However we go, this is good. So <laughs> I like how she says that she closed my notes. I said, however, however we it go, goes. it's good. <laughs> however it goes. So James 3, verse 16, I want you to see this because I want you to guard this. In your marriage, in your relationships, do not allow strife in. And James 3, 16, it says, one version says where there's strife. Another version says where there's envy and self-seeking exists. There's confusion and every evil thing are there. So when you get into strife, when you get into a fight, you're just saying devils and demons from all over the place, welcome, just come attack us both. Come attack my family. So you can't do that. You have to stay in peace. You can't yell and scream. You shouldn't be yelling unless the house is on fire. Your job, and then you're called to be the spiritual leader. So you're called to maintain that peace in the household. And women, you're called to imitate Christ. We, we both are. We're a team. It's about the unit. Can, can I say something? It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. I know you didn't want me to do it, but if you're screaming and yelling, if you're emotional, stop blaming that on somebody else. Yeah. You're responsible for your own emotions. She can't make me happy. She, she's called to walk with me, not walk for me. You're, you're supposed to be going to God and finding your joy and your peace. If you're blaming it on your spouse, it means you're not really in control of who you are. You need to make sure you don't look to the other person and say they have to make you happy because they're not supposed to make you happy. You're supposed to be happy in the Lord. That's good. Amen. Okay, so my last point before I get into my 10-point sermon is... <laughs> Very funny. This is important. Ephesians 4.32. I want you to see this. This is just how you live life. You choose to love. You choose to be kind. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Now, I like this scripture on forgiveness because sometimes we want to justify our position. But when we remember everything, every mistake, every flaw, every thought that God has forgiven us for, each one of us, then it makes it easy to forgive other people because he's been so merciful to forgive everything we've ever done. And so, you know, we've learned how to do this. We're at 31 years of, you know, loving life, loving each other, having a strong marriage, having Christ at the center, you know, building the kingdom, serving God. We got this down, you know, and it's easy. I, I just love him, and, and it's easy to forgive. But let me tell you where you might have a challenge where I have to guard myself. I have to get before the Lord and say, God, don't let me go here. And it's called secondhand offense, <laughs> 
What is secondhand offense? When somebody says something ugly about my husband, you know, I just, I'm like, ah, do you know how wonderful he is? Do you know what he's done? Do you know the sacrifice he's paid? How dare you attack my husband? You know, just like, like, you know, uh, someone had in the Bible, they had someone go dunk seven times in the river. I mean, I just want to take someone's head and stick it in the toilet and flush it seven times, you know? Desiree, so, <laughs> is that what you're thinking? Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. And I won't even tell you the rest because it goes from bad to worse. That's the, the, the light part. So anyway, so then this is what I have to do, and this is what I have to remind myself so you don't get to, and oh, moms with kids, that's the worst. <laughs> you touch my little angel. You know, I mean, that could just be, you know, I mean, we can do that with family and people we love. We can get offended for them, but it's just as dangerous. Unforgiveness will kill you. You can't get offended for anybody. You have to get laid out before God and say, God, I'm not going to fight this fight for somebody else because God... It's all about you, Jesus. And this is what the Bible says. And sometimes we want to go and, you know, get in an argument because they're attacking somebody we love. But let me tell you what the Bible says. If somebody's doing something evil, the Bible says, turn away from evil and do good. Who can I lead to the Lord? What good thing can I do? The hour is short. We have a limited amount of time here on planet Earth. You don't have time to battle low-level demonic warfare. We have to be about our Father's business, and we are called to take our city for the glory of God to win souls, and we don't have time for any nonsense, any offense. So daily, God created me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. I choose to forgive and live, and this is the stance you must take. Forgive and live. Be about your Father's business. I love it that you would take up for me like that. Oh, yeah. It hasn't always been that way. I used to, that first year I'd hear her in the bedroom singing, Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, my girlfriends, they all have good husbands. Why, oh, why don't I? I would hear that on a regular basis. That's and awesome. now, wow, that's awesome. So in my last few minutes. Okay. That means don't bug me. <laughs> no, I, that's awesome. You can sing anytime. Okay. Um, <laughs> my 10-point sermon, seriously, if I can do it in three minutes. I did it in three minutes last one. So 10 wisdom nuggets for couples. Number one, know how to make each other laugh. That is, you just want to laugh together. A merry heart does good like a medicine. So we laugh at silly stuff. I mean, we just laugh. We do that. We love to laugh. We like to get around funny people that yeah. make us laugh. Have people, couples in your life that, that you laugh with. You've got to have that. It does good like a medicine. Number two, have a date night once a week. Get out and just have some fun. We used to normally for a date night, it would be movie or dinner, movie, and sex. That was our date night. Okay, okay. But oh, okay. Oh, oh, wait, whoa, 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 wait. Don't go any further. Now that we're older, we spread it out to three nights. One night's, <laughs> one night's dinner, next night's movie, the third night's sex. So it's like we have to have three date nights. So it's, it's all good. So number three. Did you see me teeter totter? I was strong. <laughs> So number three is television has a lethal gas known to kill romance. You need to turn that thing off sometimes. No, you just decide, you know, date night, there's no TV. Um, both persons, number four, are equally involved in creating the good and the bad marriage. No, people are laughing, I know. Okay, now, you, you have to do three nights too, so it's okay. Five, speak well of your spouse. In their presence and in their absence. Never say a negative word about your spouse Never. in front of anybody ever, ever, ever. Yeah, and don't, don't do let it. anybody say anything about no, them. That's not, that. that's not wonderful. Yeah. You never allow it. You yeah. never allow it. Ever. Yeah. No jokes. No. Oh, you know my husband. He's just so lazy. Come on. That's this is, this is who God gave you. Like you that. need to be responsible yeah. with the gift that yes. God's given you. Yes. 
you don't let anybody trash mouth your mate and don't you trash mouth your mate. So number six, know the importance of being straightforward about getting your needs met. Ladies, I can't tell you enough how you just think they should know better. They should pick up on this. Surely if you drop this hint, they really don't get it. Okay, you have wait, to just wait, wait, tell wait. them. You have to be straightforward. This is what I want. This is what I Make it in one sentence, bold, easy to read, understand, because seriously, okay. they do not pick up on it unless you tell it to them straight. Okay, well, let me tell you straight then. From now on, you put the toilet seat down. How clear is that? Can I get an uh from a guy somewhere? No, no. Come on. Come on. You're smart enough to do it. You can do it. That is so wrong. Okay. You know, that is so wrong. And the worst is he goes like three months where he's trained. And then he has that one night where you think, okay, or six months and you're there. So, and I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Okay. All right. A key number seven. Are we up? I don't know. A key to a perfect marriage is not expecting your mate to be perfect. If you want to make somebody perfect, try making yourself perfect. <laughs> and then you'll just be doing that the rest of your life. So you won't have to be concerned about their problems. Some single people can't find a good mate because they're looking for a perfect mate. Amen. You'll find your mate out on that place of serving God with all your heart because you'll find somebody that's keeping up with you, doing the same thing, loving the same thing. They'll be to your right or to your left. But if you're just looking for the perfect one, you can't find those people. Okay, all right, so that's all right. The third time that you've come in, I'm just. Oh, I'm I know sorry. How, no, it's I'm good. Sorry. I like it. Now I know how many times I can. Yeah, yeah okay. Can also share the. Enjoyment yes, you're of, welcome to come in. Mess so, me up. <laughs> number eight. Why are you so upset? Is usually a dumb and obvious question. Number nine. <laughs> yeah. Pray every night together. Make sure you're just holding each other's hands and just praying and have that time together. And number 10, my last one is, you have a lifetime to enjoy one another. Don't waste one day of it. Adam was created to be king. Eve was created to be queen. Treat each other like royalty because you are. Amen. That's really good. That's really good. I want to give you some forever and always foundation stones that you build upon. These are some stones you can build your foundation of your life on. If you're here today and you've been through divorce or, or you were married and you're not now, I want you to know that there's a future and a hope for you. Okay, uh, we, we have a loving, forgiving, restoring God. There's nothing too big for Him. We're going to talk a little bit more about that next week, about divorce and how to be restored and, and how to move on with your life. But I just want to let you know that, that if you're here for the first time or haven't been coming here and you've been divorced and we're talking about marriage, I don't want you to walk away and say, they're insensitive to my situation. We are not. We are not. God is not insensitive to your situation either. He loves you and has a plan and a future for you. And the reality is maybe you're better off being single. Well, some people, you know, you know some people should be single. Of, maybe you got rid of, you know, something. Oh, like come on, come on. Okay. Some people should be single okay. and some people should be married. Just have a little fun. Just don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. Okay. <laughs> that was one. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. All right. Your, your, your marriage, remember, is not created to just specifically work. It's meant to shine. Does and I together make up one person with Jesus in the center? Amen. We're one together. We're intimate and one together. And when we are together, come here, and we are close and we look at each other like this instead of like this, when we look together as one, then we can shine for the glory of God. Come on, I, how many couples do we have in here? Stand up if you're a couple. I want you just to give a, give a hug to your, your mate right now. Just, just do this for five seconds. Come on, real close. Closer than you've ever been. Closer than you've ever been. Just squeeze, squeeze. Closer than you've ever been. Closer than you've ever been. I'm not even counting yet. Closer than you've ever been. Right now, just squeeze, squeeze. Five, four, three, 
two, one, zero. Okay, good. Awesome, awesome. Remember, we're meant to shine. Here's what Jesus said. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Married couples are saying, if you've seen us, you've seen God. You've seen the love of God. Because we're not created to try to fix our marriage and make it perfect. We're, we know God gave us one another so that the love we have with each other says that there's a great God who has mercy for you. He's got love for you. He's got grace for you. Why? Because we show that to one another because he's moving through us. Remember, you have to have this love before you can give this love. You have to have an intimate time with Jesus. You have to know Jesus Christ because you don't have the strength to forgive. You don't have the strength to let things go. You'll remember everything that they did. You'll bring it up a year later. You need his life, his mercy, his grace for you personally so that you can give it to your spouse and your maid. Without that, you will fail miserably and you'll get caught in that little place called fix it. And you'll just start trying to fix the little things that are wrong and you end up living as a fixer instead of a lover. Amen. Amen. So here's some foundation stones. Number one, you must initiate the healing process. When you come home every day, you don't know where your mate has been. You don't know what's happened in their mind. You don't know what they've been going through. Ladies, you don't know what your husband's been going through at work. You don't know they almost laid him off. You don't know they threatened him. You don't know they humiliated him in front of 10 people and he couldn't say anything because he'd lose his job. You don't know what they've been going through and they need, everybody needs healing. Yeah. That first 30 minutes that he comes home and you come home for work, healing. You initiate healing. Guys, you go find out what she's doing when you come home. Get right alongside her and start helping her. You don't go and put the TV on and click and, and try to get something to eat and just go zone out. No, you go with her. If she's cooking, you help her cook. If she's cleaning, you help her clean. If she's messing with the kids, you get right down in there and help her with the kids. Because she needs to know you want to be with her. She needs to know that you've been working all day, but you've been thinking about her. And when you come home, you get with her. And that first 30 minutes, you just listen. Because she'll... She's got 25,000 words to speak a day. And she's got 10,000 stored up for you when you get home. And so you stop trying to fix everything she says. She doesn't want you to fix her problems. She wants you to be with her, want to be with her, and listen to her. Yeah. And you just listen. And here's how you do it. Oh, mm, yeah. Wow. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Woo. Mm. Uh, mm, can go a long way. I'm telling you, you don't have to have all the answers. She just wants you to be with her. You must initiate the healing process. Ladies, you have to honor and respect your husband. Encourage him. Build him back up because he's been beaten down all day. Not only have people mistreated him, the devil's out to kill him. And so you have to build him back up. You're an awesome man. You know what my wife tells me every day? I love you. You're awesome. You're an amazing man. You're an amazing. She goes, oh, and I know what she's trying to do. She's just doing her deal. She's trying to encourage me. But it doesn't matter. It works. It's I start it's, feeling it's better about myself. Life. Yeah, it's words of life. And life and death is in the power of your tongue. And words from your spouse are sweeter than from anyone else. So your words of life need to be spoken into them to breathe encouragement and life. And it can't just be once a week. It's got to be every single day. You need to be encouraged. You initiate them. the healing process. That first 30 minutes belongs to your spouse. It doesn't belong to your kids. It doesn't belong to your buddies. It doesn't belong to the next door neighbor. You get home and then you start the healing process. You need that. If you'll let Jesus be the healer, he'll be the teacher. In other words, anything she needs to learn that I'd love to fix, Jesus will do it if I'll initiate the healer. If I let him heal through me, he'll start teaching and fix everything I need to fix. I can't fix it. You can't change anybody. Only the Lord can change people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stop trying to change your mate. You initiate the healing process and then physical touches. Do you touch enough? You should be touching all the time as couples. Just put your hands all over them. Just touch them all the time. Grab their hand. Put your arm around them. Kiss them. 
Give a five-second kiss when you come home. No less than five seconds. Come on. You got married because you couldn't handle the sexual desires that you had. The Bible says that if you can handle that sexual part, don't get married. Paul said, I'd rather you stay like me. But if you can't handle it, then go ahead and be married because it's better to marry than burn. And so one of the reasons you get married is because I just ain't the guy that can handle that. I need to be married, right? So you realize that and you go find somebody and then two, three years into it, you're not touching, you're not hugging, you're not kissing. It's just all business. It's all business. It's all, you're growing apart from one another. You, and then not too long, you'll be a stranger in the same house. You need to touch all the time. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. That doesn't mean just somebody with a with a disease. That doesn't mean somebody's got a broken arm. That doesn't mean somebody's got a headache or a flu. That means somebody that the devil's trying to beat down all day long. They need you to lay hands on them, to hold them, to touch them, to cuddle. Uh, we're going to talk about that. I got a, I got a routine for you that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give everybody a three-day challenge next week, but I'm not going to give that away right now. But you need to have physical touches, physical touches all the time. Initiate the healing process initiate. The, how many singles do we have in here? Y'all don't do this. I'm not talking to you right now. I don't care if you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend. This is not your time to have touches. Are you understanding me? Listen, if you have too many touches, you'll miss the red flags. There's red flags about people that you're with and you can't see them because your flesh is being satisfied and you overlook those things because you're enjoying all the touches. Are you hearing me today? Come on, you're, you're going out with somebody you never would have put up with a year ago. You're just in a bad time. You're rebounding. Your heart got broken. But you're willing to put up with a lot of stuff because you can't see it. You can't see it for what it is. And you've got to notice the red flags. That's a red flag. Other people can see it, but you can't see it. Other people are telling you, he's no good for you. Oh, no, you don't, just don't know him like I do. Come on, there's red flags. He got a wrangled up rock and roll t-shirt on and a bean bag for a couch. He can hold his beer, but he can't hold a job, and he creeps your little sister out. He flexes his muscle, and he makes that Hooters girl on his right arm dance, and he wants to be a star and play air guitar someday. In a heavy metal band, that's a red flag. That's a bad sign. That's a good bet. Something ain't right. Hold on now. Don't go there if I were you. Now, I ain't saying I'm a know-it-all, but something sure should have tipped you off. When he said, hey, baby, can I bum a couple bucks for gas? That's a red flag. Come on, you got to see the red flags that come your way. But if you're having all these touches and your flesh is being satisfied, you willingly overlook them and make excuses for them. And you don't need to do that because the right one is out there for you. Yeah. If you'll just serve the living God with all your heart and all your mind, all your soul, and just love him, Jesus is the answer for everything. Yes. Jesus is the answer for everything. everything. Jesus is the answer for everything. everything. The closer to him, closer to complete victory and blessing in your life. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. Jesus is the answer for everything. Here's, here's some green lights that you've got to have in your relationship, singles. They show up on time. That's a good one. They put some planning into the date. They I have, didn't show up on time till, till yeah, the first year in our marriage. That's how much I loved you, though. Yeah, but it got to be challenging. But, 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 but we, were, we were messing around, though, in, in, our, in our first year, right? What do you mean? Outside of marriage. What? Where are you going with this? So I overlooked you. I, I overlooked just, you being, just, I overlooked you being just, a, just, not on time. See just, how that red flag was right there? Just, but I forgave you and have mercy. Go back to the okay, house. don't interrupt me. Right, don't. <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to go there. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> hey, listen. Eye contact, never wandering. Eye contact, never wondering. They dress good for the day. They dress correctly. They should look like they're happy to be with you. 
there's a lot of laughter. You should be going with somebody that loves to laugh. Yes. They make you feel comfortable. You should never feel uncomfortable around anybody that you're giving your precious time to. You should never be suspicious about them. It's not right if you're suspicious. You shouldn't feel uncomfortable. Uh, you want to go to the bathroom but would rather suffer than miss something they might say. Oh, I love that one. How about you want all your friends to meet them and all the way home you're repeating, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you need to know when you have the right one and it's a green light, but never miss the red flags. Couples, listen to me. Irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences. I've had at least four in 31 years. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, listen. There's, you always come to a place in a marriage where you go, I don't think I can get over that. I don't think I can forget. That. Listen, you keep going. You keep going. God hasn't given up on you, and he hasn't given up on your union, and he has an answer for what you're going through. All it takes is that you forgive and you trust. You forgive the Lord. I mean, your, sp your spouse, and you trust. I want everybody just to raise their hand right now. Just raise it, raise it high. I want well, you I'm to have to forgive head. you right now for even saying that you would want to have irreconcilable differences. I don't want to have them. I just come to a place where I'm weak <laughs> in my saying. life in 31 years, and guess what? I mean, every God day was good. Uh, for 31 years, I thank God to be married to you. It's just been an honor and a privilege. I've never not wanted to be with you. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to work something out right yeah, here? Y'all right put your hands down. Wait a second. Yeah, okay. Right okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In, in, in your mind... What happens to couples, and you, you, I need to say this because there's couples out here that are going through this right now. It comes to a point where you don't think you can live up to what you need to do as a husband. Uh, you get in places where the devil lies to you where it's just, it's difficult. Marriage is difficult. What, however it comes to you, it doesn't matter. You need to just say, this is my wife, this is my husband, and yeah. we're not leaving one another. We're going to serve God, and God will bless this, and he'll heal me, and he'll help me, and deliver me. And I'll bet there's people out here right now that you have thought those things in your mind. You need to know you do not give up. You never give up. No on divorce. No. No. You're going to make it. It's, you're just right around the corner. If you've been divorced, there's a future for you. But if you're married right now, you do not put up with that thing that keeps coming to your head. Well, you'd, be, you'd be happier somewhere else. Wow. You'd find somebody better. You'd be happier somewhere else. No. You're not going to be happier. If it's greener on the other side, somebody spent more on their water bill. Okay, they've watered that ground better than you are, and you just, you just change, like ask God to change it, and go on. Well, I guess it might have been a few times when I, he left the seat up, and I was in the toilet water where I might have had a thought. That you were thinking of it this then. Might not work you were out, thinking of it then. Come on, you know you were. I just got to say, it's been awesome being married to you for 31 years. You, you know what's ne good about never, us? Never, ever would have the thought to You know what's good about us? Love you. We're a sign and a wonder. We're a sign and a wonder. We prophesy to the world that God has mercy yeah. and grace mm -hmm. and loves people. Mm -hmm. He sent Hosea to the Israelites and he told, he told Hosea, they won't listen to me. They've gone away from me and I love them and I want to bring them back. Mm -hmm. And they won't listen. I want to show them my mercy. So he said, I want you to go marry a prostitute and bring her to your side. And he did that. And then after a while, she left him and went back to her lovers. And he said, I want you to go grab her again. I want you to forgive her and bring her back in your life. And he did that, and it prophesied to all of Israel that God has mercy and grace and love and goodness. And he'll never leave you or forsake you. And he used his prophet to prophesy to them his love. All our marriages are are supposed to be doing that, prophesying to the world that God is full of mercy and grace and goodness and loving kindness. Amen? Amen. You, and when you're getting that from him, you can give that to her or you can give that to your mate. Okay, everybody, now we can lift our hands. Okay. 
does pray for us. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for every person in this room, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for the love that you have for each and every person. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that as a church, we're unoffendable. As a church, we love, we forgive. And Father, I pray for every married couple here. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over you. And I say that division will not come into your marriage. I rebuke that spirit of division right now. And I thank you, Father God, for wisdom nuggets being imparted to guard unity, to guard marriages, to, to, to protect what you put together, Father, the covenant of marriages. I just pray even for those that are online watching, Father, that you'd bless their marriage, that you'd bless the single people, Father. Give them the strength, Father God, to be so fulfilled in you. I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For the single people, Lord, I just pray for strength thank in their you, body. I pray for strength you, in their inner man, that thank you would strengthen Jesus. their inner man, Lord, that they'd have victory thank and dominion Lord. over their flesh, that they wouldn't fall for the trap of the evil one. They wouldn't fall for the trap of the devil. They'd have people, single people, you get good people around you. Get a group of people that inspire you and encourage you to live for God. You need that in these days. The life is a vapor. It'll be over quick. You need to have people around you that encourage you for holiness and purity and to live for God. Married couples, you need that also. When you get married, doesn't mean that you don't need to live holy. You do need to live holy. You need to live pure. You need strength. The devil comes at every single person whether they're single or married so you need couples around you that encourage you to live for God come on you've got to have people that are passionate about Jesus that are passionate about speaking his name and loving him and drawing closer to him if you don't have that the enemy will br bring counterfeits into your life Father, we just thank you for strength and wisdom and insight in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to surround each and every saint, each and every person, each and every believer here, that you would surround them with good people that can encourage them, inspire them, and lift them up and keep them strong all the days of their life. Sometimes the world's need is so great, we feel overwhelmed. What can we do that will impact the world for the cause of Christ? Pastors Mel and Desiree Ayers and the team at In His Presence have created a global ministry outreach. Through accountability and tracking real-time ministry results, we've developed opportunities that will allow your giving to make a real difference. From planting new churches and supporting ministry leaders to preaching the gospel to the Muslim world and fighting sex trafficking. You'll know that every dollar you give to this program is changing lives for the better. Pick up the phone right now or visit us on the web and send a gift of any size today. That simple action will begin a process that will reach around the globe. In today's world of competing voices, this is a place where your financial giving is reaping an incredible harvest. The clock is ticking, so call, write, or go online today. It was just another day for an experienced Hollywood stunt woman. But during a dangerous car stunt, something went horribly wrong. That's all Desiree remembers about that day, when an incredible onset explosion left her fighting for her life. But after only 10 days, she walked out of a Los Angeles burn unit completely healed. And that remarkable miracle has now been captured in her new book, Beyond the Flame, a journey from burning devastation to healing restoration. Today, Desiree, along with her husband, Mel, pastor the growing In His Presence Church in the heart of Hollywood's entertainment industry. And this highly acclaimed book tells the story of that amazing journey. Order your copy of Beyond the Flame today and begin your own journey out of the challenges you face. What are you trusting God for? Physical healing? A financial miracle? Purpose for living? Nothing's too big for God. What He did for Desiree, He'll do for you. Beyond the Flame will encourage you to stand on the promises of God's Word, speak life into your situation, and reach for your miracle. You too can live beyond the flames in your life, and you can start today. If you've ever experienced an eating disorder, or know someone who has, then you understand the shame, the humiliation, and the fear. Millions of men and women today are literally held in bondage to this crippling problem with no answer in sight. But now, one woman has broken through the lies of the diet industry and dared to tell the truth. Desiree Ayers was a successful Hollywood actress and professional stunt woman. She was at the top of her field and yet hid the secret of anorexia and bulimia for years. In her remarkable book, God Hunger, Desiree Ayers exposes the lies and dares to speak the truth. 
order online at GodHunger.com. If you or a loved one suffers from an eating disorder, then don't wait. God Hunger. Finally, hope is here.